At one point in human history, people would have said that a six minute mile was impossible. That walking on the moon was impossible. That jogging was not healthy and beneficial for you in any case, which nowadays we know is completely false. We know that going for a run is part of being generally healthy. Like if you go for regular jogs, it's good for your body. We forget that we are still that exact same person, that same group of people that sometimes might have blind spots in certain areas. Maybe we had a lot of wins over a certain period of time and made us a little bit too confident about certain other things. Now, I am a dating coach and I've been doing this for a long time. I've taught thousands of people how to be better with women. And I worked with a lot of clients. And I'll say this, looks have never been a factor in me getting a somebody's success with women. You can't run a six minute mile. You can't walk on the moon and you can't get a pretty girl. This is all bullshit. Now, some of you guys might have an ego about understanding exactly how this works. You guys might have, like, I have the exact reasoning for why women are into guys. Now, the funny thing is, though, is that the less you understand about something, the more you think you understand it. And I thought I understood this, too. Nine years ago, I would have been in a lot of your guys' shoes, and I would have agreed with you. Looks matter. But I've gone through time and time again where I've been proven wrong on this simple fact, which is why I'm making this video to begin with. On top of me going out and approaching a lot of women and coaching thousands upon thousands of guys, I myself have studied psychology and biology with a passion. I've looked into this shit and I've looked and I've delved into it and I've studied it. I've written down notes after notes after notes obsessively thinking about this, going again and again and again, trying to figure out what is the true answer and what is the real reason the world works the way it does. Why do I say that looks don't matter for guys? Now, I'm not saying that they don't matter completely because it does factor in. It, it does make... A difference but it makes such a subtle difference for a lot of us that for the most part honestly it's not even worth even worrying about a lot of you guys are making the excuse that your looks are gonna stop you from getting the girl that you want and that's complete bullshit this belief is actually stopping you from getting the results that you fucking want so in this video I'm gonna prove to you and teach you the way the world really works around looks what is actually going on now first I'm gonna teach you guys about biology we start off as homo erectus two million years ago us homo sapiens have been around for 300,000 years and in the majority of that time leading up to about 6,000 years ago we were in tribes now a tribe was a tribe of 25 to 50 people you knew at maximum 25 to 50 people your entire fucking life these were your people these were the entire this was your social clique now for guys it makes sense to care about looks why because when you're trying to get a child you want that child to have good genetics because the woman for the most part it's not so valuable for have status for the most part. I mean, it would, but the women were the choosers. The women's made the decisions in whether or not they had sex with a the guy. There are twice as many women in comparison to the guys that had children, twice. That's for every, for every guy, half of them didn't end up getting any children into the next generation. Now, do you think it mattered if the guy had a good jawline? A lot of you guys would argue yes, but here's my counter argument. What if, it wasn't looks as much as it was status. I'm going to throw you guys some more statistics. Now, in general, a child had a one in eight chance of making it to their teenage years. One in eight chance. One in eight. Now, let's say that you were with a, very, with a man of high status, a guy that the tribe loved, the guy that was the leader, the guys that everybody loved. If you had kids with that guy, do you think the ch kids' chances of getting older would come into fruition? Oftentimes, the answer would be yes. Now, let's say that you were with a hunky dude, a very ma masculine, strong jawed type of guy, but everybody fucking hated him. Who would the girl choose? The dopey looking dude who had everybody loved him or the guy with the strong jawline? Because I guarantee you, it'd be the dumpy looking guy that had everybody loving him. See, the problem is, is that people think that others think like them. And this is just narrow thinking. Uh, one of the funny things is, is that if I talk to a guy and his first interaction and his first instinct is to tell me that people are manipulative, that guy's manipulative. If his first instinct is to tell me that people are super caring and empathetic, I imagine that guy's an empathetic person. But the problem is there's a wide variety of people that exist. And us as guys, the problem is when you don't study psychology, you don't understand this, you don't think about it. Again, Dunning-Kruger effect, you think you understand that which you do not. 
Everybody is a fucking expert in everything. But I'll say this, I have done this and I've studied this. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. You think because you care so much about looks that women must also care a lot about looks. This isn't the case. All right. Now, the problem is, is that you assume because you're so infatuated with an attractive woman that you care so much about it, that women must also. That this must be the end all be all for every woman. Now, that's not the case. That's so far away from the case. Now, like I said, we were made to be in a 25 to 50 man tribe. We are not made for this 8 billion human tribe that we think we're in. A lot of us are actually depressed because we're in such a massive tribe. We think that we're so far in disparity away from the people at the very top of this, like of our tribe that we get depressed. We think we're on the fucking bottom. When I'll say this, you and me, we're not as bad off as you think we are. All right. You think that you're down here. I'm going to say this, the, the way that this new tribe, this 8 billion man tribe, in comparison to your 25 to 50 man tribe kind of manipulates you makes you more lean towards depression when like our smaller tribes would have given you a lot more of a positive boost you would have felt a lot more of a of a self-worth type of an individual if you were in a smaller tribe we are comparing ourselves against post malone actors millionaires billionaires and you're like i'm not that guy so i must be a fucking loser and that's not the case if women are not interested in looks what are they interested in High status behavior and high status proof. All right, so what is high status? Now, I'm gonna say this. Money wasn't around 200,000 years ago. I'm sorry to say it. It was not around. There was no paper, dollar, stacks, or nothing like that, so they didn't give a fuck. Biologically, women don't care. What do they care about? Do people like you? Do women like you? Are you a leader of men? Can you hold tension? Can you be cocky, funny, clever? Can you be like super fucking witty and passionate about your life? These things make you attractive massively fucking attractive. Here's the thing though. This is hard to hardwire into yourself. Now, me and my friends, we have this thing where we are constantly trying to manipulate and brainwash ourselves into thinking that we are 12 out of 10s. Is it true? Probably not. But the simple belief itself is a frame battle. People will fight us on this, but I'll say this, my frame that I'm a 12 out of 10 will be stronger than anybody else's that I'm not. And for this reason, I can manipulate the way that the brain works and the frame works. If you've ever studied this, look up frame battles. Frame battles are a very p massive and powerful factor in your being attractive. If you think you're worthy, you are worthy. But this is the problem. In your brain, you have a hierarchy system. Every creature has a hierarchy system in their head. It's hardwired. It's since we were amoebas. Like this is like how we were built to think. Now, anytime there's a massive amounts of the same type of creature in the same area, there had to be a dominance hierarchy. Um, Otherwise, it'd be chaos. People would be fighting each other all the time. Even the alpha would come out maimed. And then somebody else that didn't get in the fight could take him out even if he was weaker originally. So we have to find a way to come to terms without getting physical and fighting. Now, humans do it in a very interesting way. Now, I'm actually going to get into a separate topic completely. This is something I've been studying for the past couple weeks. Humor. Now, why do we laugh? Why do you laugh? Why, do, why is it like such a cultural thing to find something funny. Does it make any sense biologically as an animal? Probably not to you, but I'm gonna explain it right here. Now, rats and dogs, they laugh and they laugh when they're mock fighting, when they're tickling each other. You and me still laugh when we can tickle each other. Now, why is tickling a thing? It's because it's for mock fighting. The, the entire front side of us is ticklish. Our armpits are ticklish. And why? Because these are the most sensitive areas. The sensitive areas where all your most vital organs are, not where your rib cage is, where it's protected, but down below, below your rib cage. Now, if somebody were to get to your rib cage and tickle you, that guy wins. It's kind of like a mock fighting kind of way. So dogs do the same thing. And when they go through this, this mock fight, they laugh. Laughter is a changing of the hierarchies. It's a changing of the frameworks. Us as humans, we took this to the next step, okay? Because we don't fight physically as much. We fight with verbal. We fight with frame battles. We fight this way. I can make a joke and because I can make a joke that's clever and I'm fully committed to it, it makes other people laugh. It shows that I believe the frame that I'm saying. And if I were to say a joke without actually committing to it, no, people would actually get annoyed with me. All right, now let's say that you were talking to a pretty girl that you felt was out of your league. Could you make a joke with her? Would you run out of things to say? The answer would be yes, you would. Now, what if you thought you were above her? What if you thought you were out of her league? What if you thought you were at her level? Could you joke with her? Could you be funny? Could you be clever? Would you ever run out of things to say? You would not. All right, now your brain has a way of like making yourself seem smaller than you are. 
at times. If it thinks that you're low in the totem pole, it's gonna throttle you. It's gonna add extra RAM to this, this uh, computer you have in your head. All right, now when you're stressed out, you're anxious, you think you're low in the totem pole, you can't joke with people. You're gonna become self-conscious. Like if you try to joke, you're gonna second guess yourself. It's a way of protecting yourself from like getting kicked out of the tribe by the alphas or getting hated by the alphas. Instead, you make yourself look meek, mild, and hopefully, fingers crossed, you will find a mate eventually. Maybe you'll find um, a way to get resources for the tribe and raise their standing in the tribe. But until then, meek and mild, you're not a threat. This is where laughter comes from. It is a way to, one, change hierarchy, two, change your frameworks. Now, there's a bunch of different types of ways you can make somebody laugh. Now, the one that I'm gonna tell you guys not to do is self-deprecating humor. Why? So, laughter is an indication that everybody else is agreeing upon the new frame. It's agreeing upon like the, the changing of hierarchy. Now, for the most part, when you're self-defeating, doing self-defeating humor, it will make people laugh, yes. But it's because it's you telling other people that you're not a threat. People will like you, but you're not a threat. You're not high status. It makes you not attractive. Now, if you joke self-defeating about something that you obviously aren't, like, um, you just hate me because I'm black. Like, obviously I'm not black. Um, I could say something like, um, I got a double digit IQ. If I know the girl already knows that I'm really fucking intelligent. Laughter is an indication that the tribe is agreeing upon a frame, either a changing of hierarchy, a changing of how the world works, something along those lines. And the only people who are allowed to change the frame are people that are confident about their frame change or are confident in their standing in the tribe. They're confident that they're the leader. That's why you generally see people that are the most confident are the ones that can make the jokes. It's not for the people that are insecure, that feel like they're low on the totem pole, it's for the people that are high in the totem pole. So if you guys wanna start being more humorous, it is a huge key factor in becoming a high status individual. The next thing I'm gonna to talk to you guys about is what I call box theory. This is one of my own theories that I came up with a couple years ago and I've been developing and working through and thinking through. Um, in general, like I said, we are not built to handle the 8 billion people that exist. We don't have the fucking capabilities mentally. We're built for 25 to 50 man tribes, maximum 150. Our brain can't handle any more. If you ever see a school that goes over 150 uh, people in the, in the school, what happens is they all break up into cliques. We can't handle 8 billion fucking people. So what happens is we start creating little boxes for people. Racism, sexism. Other isms that I probably can't even say. You're like, this is a redneck. Oh, this guy over here is a fucking loser. Oh, this guy sucks with women. Oh, this guy's gonna be really awkward and creepy with me. Oh, this guy, he's gonna be suave. And you know, there's a good chance that I'm gonna end up liking him. There's a good chance this guy has it figured out. That he's gonna be fucking clever. That he's gonna be the kind of guy that could put me in my place when I'm being a bitch. This is the kind of individual that I'm gonna teach you guys how to be. Now, first and foremost, look to the kind of guys that are in your area that are getting good with women. These are the guys you wanna mimic in looks. Why? Because when you first talk to a girl, she's gonna to wanna to put you into a box initially. Now, if you're walking up to her looking homeless, you're dressed terribly, you're dirty, whatever, she's gonna to wanna to put you in a box. Now, obviously, you can overcome the box by being high status and expressing this, but she's gonna have that knee-jerk reaction where she doesn't want that awkward interaction with a creepy, weird dude. So you can like give her good eye contact, use your pauses, be really authentic with your tone, and you can flip her. This takes a bit of effort though, I'm gonna say. It's a lot easier to come across with a proper uh, box to begin with. Now, here's the next thing I wanna talk about this with box theory. Now, ultimately, you do wanna have an initial box that's positive. You wanna like try to present yourself as somebody that's clean. And I'm not talking like, I'm not even talking about like facial wise, I mean dress wise. Do you seem like you have it to put together? Does it seem like you have high self-esteem on based on the way you dress? Now me, when I was younger, I had really bad body issues. I, I was overweight and I still am a little bit overweight. You guys can't see because I'm on the camera, but I have a bit of a tummy on me. Now, I would wear clothes that were too big for me, like three sizes too big, like tents. I'd wear pants that were, that were baggy, that didn't fit me or falling off my ass all the fucking time. I wore shoes that were the same kind of shoes a dad would wear. It just indicated that I had low self-esteem. Dress in a way says you have high self-esteem and you believe in yourself. You think you're high in the hierarchy, not low. Think that you are valuable and you're worthy of dressing in a way that says that you are of a high box. Now, like I said, I'm gonna teach you guys how to avoid the box completely. Now, initially, like I said, the brain isn't made to put like people into their own individual boxes. We just don't have the capabilities. But as you talk to a girl, prove to her little by little that you're not worthy of a box, that you're a unique individual. All right, don't say the same things that other loser guys would say. Talk in a way that's super fucking just certain. That you're certain about yourself. 
that you are 110% the most confident man she's ever talked to. You believe in yourself and not from a cocky place, just from a calm confidence. This is where you guys are gonna get your own individual box. And when you're in your own individual box, you're unique and you're extremely fucking valuable to that woman. She's never gonna meet another man like you. And this is how you become the exception to the rule. For other guys, things that you think matter would matter, all right? Like being massively overweight, having no money, having, let's say, maybe you're skinny. For other people, this shit would matter. But for you, you're the exception to the rule. You're a badass motherfucker. And these things, she's gonna backwards rationalize that you are a good looking guy. And I've seen this so many fucking times I work with so many fucking clients that push through this and the girls couldn't even like quantify why they like the guy. But you know what, they would they'd choose one thing. They'd be like, oh, I love your eyebrows. Oh, I, I love the way you dress. Oh, you're so tall, oh, you're so this, you're so that. When in all actuality, she just doesn't know how to express what she's feeling because there's no societal term currently for a guy like this. Because society thinks that looks matter, which they don't fucking matter. Now, any guy that follows my fundamentals of game will always 110% come across as attractive. But the problem is, is that most of you guys, it's, it's a difficult thing to hammer home in your head. Now, first, I wanna to get to the hierarchy in your head. Now, it comes from a mixture of things. One, a bit of brainwashing. You have to know that you have to be a 12 out of 10 to attract a gorgeous girl. And you have to believe this. And I don't mean from a cocky place, I mean from a cool, calm confidence that you are the fucking shit. Now, the next thing. You have to start accumulating little wins by doing keystone habits, going out approaching women, by going hitting the gym, meditating, reading, going after money. Why? Not because it's gonna make the girl attractive, but because it's gonna make you start believing in yourself. You're gonna start having a higher hierarchical standing in your own head, in your own little brain. This thing is really hard to trick. So you have to give it little wins, give it little things that to, um, to latch onto. Like, this is why I'm a fucking amazing person. This is why I'm fucking awesome. There are some guys that are just deliriously confident and they don't have anything. You and me, unfortunately, we're intellectuals. We can't trick ourselves as easily. So we have to give ourselves little wins to help ourselves build up into this fucking thing. Now, what are the fundamentals game that I was just talking about? One, eye contact. Eye contact says that you are 110% who you are. Now, I don't mean always just be gla glaring girl down or whatnot, but when you're trying to sh express that you are a fucking cool ass guy, give her eye contact. When you're trying to show her that you are legit, like the person you are expressing yourself to be, give her eye contact because it shows that you are 110% honest and yourself at that current moment. Now, the next thing is being grounded. When everybody else, when the world's falling apart, you are certain, you are calm. If you guys have ever seen Loki from um, The Avengers, when shit hits the fan, he's the one making jokes. So when he makes the jokes, he's saying, look, this situation you guys are looking at is not as big a deal as you think it is. Watch me, I got this shit. And everybody calms down, starts laughing, and everybody stops treating it like such a big deal. Because the world is a lot quieter for him than it is for others. This is what groundedness truly is. Now, a lot of people like kind of say it's like a rock that gets hit by a wave. It doesn't move, it's just, it's 110% solid. But this is how I think about it. Like for me, what, what it feels like is like the world just gets quiet. Like shit that used to really freak me out, like maybe a girl saying, fuck you, someone wanting to get in a fight with me. Um, maybe like my entire life falling apart, seemingly. For the most part, it's just quiet now. Like in the grand scheme of this bullshit, this life, this thing that I'm gonna ultimately just die at the end of, it's not a fucking big deal. That's groundedness. Now the next one is emotional control. Now, a lot of you guys are getting depressed, anxious, sad. These emotions make you look low in the total pole. It says that you are not in a good place in your life. And a lot of you guys will create narratives to keep the shit rolling, keep the shit in your, in your ecosystem. Get the fuck rid of it. What you need is happiness. What you need is confidence. What you need is excitement and happiness about the world. Excitement when you go and talk to the girl. Hey, I thought you were really cute. I want to talk to you. What's your name? Excitement. That's what you fucking need. Not this sad, depressed shit. This is shit makes you unattractive as all fucking hell. The next one is attraction versus comfort. Now the problem is, is that some of you guys have probably experienced this. If there's a girl that's too attractive for you, you won't go talk to her. If anything else, you'll tell your friends that her elbows are too pointy or some bullshit like that. It's your ego telling you that that girl's out of your league. So you're not gonna go chase her. So you're gonna create some kind of narrative to protect your ego and your confidence. The girls do the same thing. So you need to constantly kind of feel it out and know where the girl's ego is. Where is she at? Are you out of her league or are you in her league? Are you going to make her feel, if she feels like she's gonna lose status by talking to you, she's not gonna to talk to you. She's gonna reject you. Make sure she's never losing status. Make sure that you're within her pocket. Attraction versus comfort. Now this one is the most difficult one to hammer home. Assume the positive. Now, like I said, you have a hierarchy in your head 
And when you go see a girl, you're going to anticipate either positively, negatively, or neutral about how the girl's going to react to you. And generally speaking, it's, you're not going to, it's not going to be neutral. It's either going to be negative or positive. Now, when you assume positively the girl's supposed to like you, it's an indication that you think you're of high value. Now, on the other side of things, if you approach and you are assuming the negative, you're approaching like this. You're like, you might, you might talk really fast with your, with your speech. You might raise your shoulders. You might stutter. You might not be able to hold eye contact all well, or you'll flinch or you'll twitch because you're feeling really anxious because you're expecting that, that ego hit. Because for you, again, you're not very grounded. It's just going to fucking hit you in a hard way. Now, if you assume the positive, you're going to act very still, very relaxed, very calm with your, and soothing with your voice. You're not going to use extra words. You're going to be able to be funny, exciting, because you assume she's going to like you no matter what. It's a frame battle. I am of value to you. Do you believe me? The next one is masculinity. Masculinity. That you are a man, that you are grounded, that you're going to be a leader, take charge kind of guy. That men love you, women chase you. Now, the next one is the one that I've been doing this entire video, tonality. Changing cadence. Being willing to use pauses to capitalize on points, to use a whisper, to be able to change it up, to be witty, to be able to change the cadence, speed it up, slow it down, to break rapport at the end of the sentence saying that you don't care what she thinks. This is tonality. Another type of person would be monotonous. Maybe talk really fast, like da, 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 da. no pauses because he doesn't think the girl's going to stick around because he feels like he's on the girl's time. No, she's on your time because you're the one of value. The next one is game related approach. You have to approach. Why? Leads. Gets you abundance. Gets you back to back feedback about how you're fucking up. If you're not going out approaching and doing this at the same time and using all these fundamentals, you're just like sitting down, not really putting yourself in front of women. Like how do you expect to actually hammer this stuff home? You have to approach and approach intelligently with intelligent effort. If you're approaching just the same goddamn way every fucking time, how do you think you're going to improve? You don't approach with intelligent effort. For a lot of you guys, you guys still might be shaking your heads. Like this guy's a dumbass. This guy doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. So I'll say this for those of you guys who feel this way, do whatever the fuck you have to, to build this hierarchy up in your head, to believe that you are enough. What is it? Do you have to make the money? Do you have to go work out and get super jacked? Do you have to go and buy super fucking nice clothes? Do you have to have amazing friends around you? Do you have to have some fucking amazing job that says that you are of value? Whatever you have to do to build this hierarchy in your head, I don't care. I don't care if you even agree with me. But you do that, which you think is gonna help you out with getting women, and I promise you, you will get them. And with that being said, I've peace been on out. The bottom, feeling nothing but ambitious. I've been on my grind for that number one position. Said that I should get a label, but it's under some conditions. Tell them suck a dick and mind your motherfucking business. I'm the trillist, yo. Knee deep in the game and invested. Ain't nobody want it, but I came and I blessed it, yo. Came with a bang and a wreck shit, yo. Just rapping the fame and affection. Put them on the back like violent shit.